I'm Chinya McKenzie from Mama Knows Best and you're through to Stories of the Soul. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to be speaking to Katie Hignett, who is a mother on a quest to find all the tools she needs to raise her son as a white woman, raising her black child. So I'm grateful for um, Katie to share her story with us and to actually give her, you know, give us the wisdom through her experience. Hey, Katie, how are you doing? Hi. Good. <laughs> That's good. Thanks so much for joining me here on the Mama Knows Best Show of the Soul, and thank you for sharing with me your experience and your wisdom. So yeah, this is a great topic, and thank you so much for sharing it. Have you found it hard to actually find the tools to raise your son? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Wow. So in terms of raising your son, how is it that you said that you'd like to raise him, that you're finding difficult is finding all those tools to do that? Well, I think we all live and we learn. Um, so it's just through admiring other people. So obviously I feel like there's a lot of negativity on social media at the minute. And um, it, was, it was actually through someone I know. Um, he responded to someone's quite racist post so well and 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 so like so informative that nobody racist or not could come back the mm -hmm. only, only response would be sorry and i just thought that's how i want to raise my son i want him to be to have all the knowledge to to take anybody on ignorant or racist whoever they are mm -hmm. i want him to have all the facts and, and be able to respond that way to people I just, I just felt like it was amazing and, that, and that's that's what I want to give to my son. So do you feel like there is racism in the world? Have your son, you, you know... Yeah. <laughs> Has, okay, I'll tell the question. Has your son experienced racism where you have to react as well? Yeah, all yeah. the time. Wow. How often? What's the most recent experience? Or... Just last week. Oh, my God. And the week before. Wow. So as you're seeing this, your son being treated different or, you know, treated different with some of his skin, mm -hmm. and you are English, white lady, how does that make you feel? It's just, it's really hard because I, I, want, I, I feel the pain because that's my baby and mm -hmm. you're going, you're having to fight a fight that is so ridiculous in my eyes. It's like mm -hmm. life's hard enough without yeah. having to fight because of the colour of your skin also. Um, I find it really hard, but then I also find as as a white woman, it's almost like I almost feel a fraud because I don't understand that pain, but mm. I'm trying to in the most respectful way possible to, to yeah. give him the tools, but to not also, you know, I don't want to be this person that's like, oh, poor me, because I can never understand that feeling mm. but, so I do I just think I do think it's hard yeah but yeah to take it on <laughs> definitely <Never> on. <laughs> definitely oh wow so in terms of you know it's really really interesting that you said you know because you are white you don't you haven't experienced that experience and it's quite hard to understand that feeling and it's really amazing that you're, you can see that and you're, you're looking at your child that's come from you. It's of it any different day you go, it just goes. Does he have any dilemma in a sense of, you know, that these people or the person who's saying things to me because it's corrupt my skin. You know, my family looks like them. You know, do, is there any dilemma in his head to say why? Why is it happening? Um, I feel like recently it's more of a subject in our household, but from the thing is repeat a lot of people, you know, these people that think race racism doesn't exist, this has been his life from being a baby. So mm. from from being in nursery, being told you can't come to my party because you have a brown face, it's part of his life. So it's nothing new to mm. him. 
Mm -hmm. um, it's just the, the way you explain it. So obviously at that age, it's, oh, those people are just stupid. You know, I, I try and teach him this and, you know, I just try and uplift it. I try to uplift him, you know, look at you, you're so beautiful. And we used to have yeah. a joke that like, obviously being a white woman with my fake tan, he'd be like, are you trying to get mixed race like me? And I'm like, yes, because you're beautiful. I wish I was like you. So I tried to just give him that confidence and, yeah. and then he, he kind of let the racism roll off. Yeah. But obviously he's getting older now and he's getting more serious and it's hurting him now. It's it, yeah. it's hurting him for the love of his family, for, the, for his love of, other black people um he you know only last week he he cried because of racism and it's it's heartbreaking mm. it's really heartbreaking do you think that racism he taught do you think that nursery he wasn't allowed to go to a party because he had brown skin how, how is a child supposed to, what how would a child know those things is racism taught within our household yeah i don't believe that a child would think that mm. I feel like the child has heard that yeah you know we know ourselves ch children don't aren't born swearing they hear us swear and then they, they you know as an as a parent we all know they mm. learn our bad habits and we try and break them bad habits and we try not to do things in front of them so for a child to be racist mm. I just feel like they have to have been taught that yeah it's true it's because my my children as well um recently at school and um, one of the children said i can't i'm not playing with you because you got black skin when they were younger you know it's like oh you got a chocolate face you know and all these things and i think what you know it's absolutely shocking and when i did approach the parent i said i do not teach this at home so this is not an experience that my son would ever call your son out because of the colour of his skin. So is it that you're teaching him at home? Oh, no, 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 no. But my thing is, where are they getting it from? I bet so, they've got black friends, didn't they, as well? Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's true. Well, it's... it's, it's oh, well, what's lovely that you said as well is that, um, you know your son's experienced that and you personally can't understand that experience um but does that make you you know i'm kind of maybe asking you a double question or you think that i'm asking you to you know speak on behalf of all, all english people <laughs> you know but would if someone's going through something and even if you don't understand you know, do you think that you should just take a moment to kind of say, okay, I don't understand it, but if it's affecting someone else, then maybe I'll change that behaviour. Yeah, of course. And for me, it's a case of currently, I'm trying to educate myself as to, you know, if there's if there's a word that shouldn't be used, well, let, let me find out why it shouldn't be used. What happened? Why is it a bad word? Let me explain that to my son so that when some idiot decides that this word is our God-given right to use, blah, 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 like, like you see on social media at the minute, he's equipped to go, well, actually, this is why this word offends me. So can you please not use it? And then I feel yeah. like if someone comes to you like that, you have to just go, sorry, surely. Mm, yeah. If you're an educated person, that is. Yeah. I always ask myself, what gives, what's the justification of why someone would treat someone different just because of colour of their skin? And then I kind of go say, you know, is it slavery? Because I think at school, they only teach slavery for black history. Yeah. And so slavery is a gatekeeper. Is that the story that's being told and retold to actually show the devalue of a human against another? Because that's the only thing I could actually read. For. But what's beautiful, I also had the book right here. And um, when I was on my seat and on my um, journey, um, I came across a book, and everyone should Google it, make sure you Google The Forgotten History of British Slavery, White Slavery. So, The Forgotten History of British White Slavery. So, when I was reading this book, um, I found out that, you know, slavery never happened from Africa first. 
it happened from the UK first and where the British, you know, actually took the, you know, the prostitutes or people who lived in the, the, you know, the criminals and took them and shipped them off to the new world. When they got there, they had to actually, you know, live out their sentence however many years and then, you know, and then, you know, they'll be free or, or usually because of the conditions that they'll have. Or die within two years because it was a tobacco picking um, industry. And then after that, they, you know, they invest or they've gone on their quest to bring in the, you know, the, you know, go to Africa and then start that African trade um, Atlantic kind of, you know, journey to, to where we are today. So do you think that even that piece of information, you know, if that was taught in schools, would that shift the mindset of people? I think it'd help. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about racist people. Um, I know a lot of people would maybe argue with me, but I almost feel like it's an illness because I, I don't understand it. So I just put people like that in a, in a, in a ill, like you're not well, there's something missing category. Um, but from again, from my personal experience, um, they did some sort of Black History early early years in my son's primary school, and he mm. came home saying, "I'm a slave," just like that. And I was like, "What?" I had to go into the school to say, "Why is my son saying this?" And they were so like, "Oh, just a, oh, just another woman kicking off." You know, you're always just trouble, aren't you? If, if, if you question someone, it's you just trouble and they just try and keep you away. Um, and it, they went to some sort of um, old-fashioned house and obviously the pictures and what they were learning was that, that black people were slaves, the end. So there, the, from that age of, I think he was about five or six, that was his understanding that these white people are better than me because I'm a slave. And he accepted it. And that's where I'm saying this education needs to change. And yeah. as, as a mother, I have to say, no, no you're yeah. not. No. And that's where I think what you're saying is teaching them the other sides to history. Yeah. You know, it seems that people just want to learn one thing and one thing only, but it's not right. Yeah. Um, I definitely think it would help. Um, I'm yeah. not sure whether it'd stop people being completely racist, but... Yeah. Um, it would definitely help uplift young black children because mm -hmm. they they can't accept that. Nobody can accept that. That's ridiculous. And we have to know as well, you know, that they're born from kings and queens, you know, of black time. And there were black kings and queens in the UK and in Scotland, had a long language of them. You know, Lady Macbeth was a black woman. Even to the point of you know the richest man in the whole world, Mansa Musa, he was you know today still the richest man, and he was a black man. You know even to the point of me, the story of Christ, how they depict Christ to be blonde hair, blue eyes. It's like when you read the book, no way can the Christ of Jerusalem that hid, you know, in the depths of Egypt, where you know the Sudanese people who are dark skinned, you know. Could have been white. So I think you're definitely right about the whole re education of people. And I understand that throughout history, many different people have gone through different things, different cultural people have gone through different things. And um, it's difficult to come together in peace, love, and harmony. You know, you know, you said that there's not enough information out there. Is there enough information out there for you to actually? you know, have to to raise your son? Um, I think it could be made a lot easier. Um, but obviously it depends how determined you are to answer questions. My my child is a child that questions everything. He, mm. he likes to know the facts. He likes to know why and when and how. And there's no in-between, it's the facts. So mm. obviously for me, it's a job of finding him the facts and discussing things, but also in such a delicate way that when a child's been hurt by something, you know, when we talk about learning about black history, I checked his curriculum on his, he's about to go to high school. So I checked the curriculum 
And again, it's just slavery that he'll be learning next year. Um, and I discussed it with him and he's like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. You know, he's very, because yes. of that experience from such a young boy, he's scarred by that. And he, he he's not interested in knowing anything like that. So when he asked me to learn about black history during this lockdown period, um, it was like, how, how do I go about this in a positive way and uplift him? Because he's got such negative feelings towards learning, but he wants to learn, but not what these educate you know in high school what they're going to teach him in primary school what they taught him yeah um, so we decided to go down the road of um just positive black influences um people that made changes and um obviously he saw a lot of he, he's old enough to, you know he goes on social media now um mm. people being negative about the protests so then we decided to learn why why do we protest? What what what's that given us in the past? And then he you know, he, so he's he's learning and he's now can argue with other people that say any rubbish that he's seeing at the moment, he, he's given them facts already at this young age. So but it could be made a lot easier, definitely. No, definitely. Do you think that changing the curriculum in school? is a quest that all mothers and people truth need to kind of campaign about. Yeah. So do you think that um, if a child's been taught that their ancestors, including them, are just from slaves or are slaves, what do you think the outcome is? I feel like it can put, again, I'm not speaking for everybody, but mm. I feel like it, it almost makes you feel like the underdog before you've even began. Mm, You're yeah. accepting that someone's better than you and that's not the case. Yeah. And, you know, my child came home accepting that he's a slave. Like, what yeah. the hell? Um, yeah. So I, I feel like it, it, it's got to change. It has to. It has to. Feel like it needs to be black history. It needs to just be history. Yeah, world history, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because through the world history, you see the migration of people, you see how it goes together, you know, how things lock together, and you have a bigger understanding of how the, why the world is today. Um, one thing I find is that I, like, in America, they say, oh, I'm Afro-American. And, you know, a French person say, I'm French. Italian say, I'm it's Italian. You know, I feel like in the UK, they kind of bunch people together in a sense, say, black, white, other. That's how it used to be. So now they've added a bit a few more categories. Yeah. But bunching everyone together, even a person who will tip the white box, it is, could be coming from different cultural backgrounds mm -hmm. that have nothing in common, but they've been bunched together, as well as, you know, anyone picking the black box as well, they, you know, and I feel like, personally, if we describe who we are by our heritage, mm -hmm. I think that would be so much more rich in telling people, showing people a journey of the people that have contributed to be me. So, you know, I'll be Afro-Caribbean, you know, Scottish-British. Automatically, you've seen a travel journey of my ancestors who makes me me and I think as well a lot of people who are white you know if they were to describe their journey in that particular way you know they might be saying afro, afro you know spanish english da, 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 but they still look white you know it really disperse that whole thing and one beautiful thing that um I was at a funeral with uh, and it was my grand uncle was there my grand uncle said, Ginia, do you know that you you know your ancestors are freeborn? And I was like, freeborn? Do you know what freeborn is? No. I was like, I said, freeborn. He said, Do you know you're freeborn? And he said, Your ancestors didn't come from slavery. Automatically I put picked up the baton to say, you know, my ancestors come from slavery. You know, um, you know, within that within that category and I identified with that. And he was saying no. You're freeborn. And he basically said, you know, you have the, the slave master, let's say, who had three sons. The three 
Houston's born, well, no, the Houston were there, so they were white. And they actually got with, one got with an African woman, one got with an Arawak, which is the original Indian from West India, West Indies, um, Arawak woman, and then the other one, they didn't know where he went to. And our lineage come from the Arawak woman and the um, white man who, you know, who owned the plantation automatically so the wind's going automatically i thought omg the story that i adopted to be a part of me is not my story no so the story of me being in a lineage of maybe a slave owner is now my reality now i as a black woman has to look at you know what I mean reparation you know, that's where my mind's gone is to say, oh, okay, if my ancestors, is, this has happened, then, you know, the oppressor doesn't always probably look like white. You know what I mean? Like now I'm a product of. So then therefore now my, you know, I need to start thinking about, you know, reparation from my own. And I'm sure that if everyone followed their, you know, historical journey, it will tell the story and respond from there, you know? So even Ben Affleck was called out, you know, where, you know, he was going through the, where they were looking at his lineage and found out that, you know, he's come from an ancestor that's slave owners and he tried to hide that. And then now he's like, okay, I'm sorry. But now he has to come from a point of, I have to respond from here and recreate it. I could change the world and make it different. I, I agree with you when you say about racism being an um, illness. I think it's an illness, I really do. That's weird. weird. But I think it's an illness that they've made, um, kind of made people separate through differences. So if we keep the differences, you know, and people arguing against this little thing, you know, we can do what we do in this world. People are pre-distracted and then it's become an issue where people are affecting their, you know, social barriers, their social place. So, which is really strange. So in terms of even going forward, you talked about, you think you need more, there should be more tools more available. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So more historical? More history. And I also just think as, whether you're black, white, whoever you are, just stop and look. If you, you know, I feel like there's so many people that are so passionate about being negative. You know, I look at Facebook as, as one, of, one of the things where, you know, people who don't really have an opinion about much, mm. all of a sudden, any negative black press there is, it's shared, it's shared, it's shared. And I just think, I just don't understand how you can be so passionately proactive at pushing anything negative around like do you never just stop and think where things are coming from why was there a protest like just listen if you know even if you don't want to act on anything just listen to people's stories and and people who have been have suffered racism tell your story and yeah. hopefully like if people just up and had to think about what they're sharing just remember that there is a little black boy somewhere that will be looking at that post mm, mm, mm. I just think people are so maybe they do believe racism doesn't exist and, and them sharing that post is not racism because it's their god-given right freedom of their speech and whatnot but you know mm. if you turn around to me today and said katie the word i don't know lemon because there's a lemon next to me the word lemon offends me or the word blue I don't know any word you say to me and if you Katie that hurts my feelings because of this I'd be like I'm sorry I won't use that word it's not going to kill me not to use that word mm -hmm. so why are we why are people so passionate about you know I just see so many ridiculous posts and I just wish people would think twice about you know the little people that are seeing it as well mm -hmm. Do you think that them sharing the post is a reflection of what they're feeling, what they're thinking? So if it's a racist post they're sharing, then maybe they're racist? Yeah, because yeah. there's people, you know, people that I know, people that I've spent time with, people that I would have called friends, yeah. and longer people that I will call friends because 
I just feel like even if I didn't have a mixed race child, I don't want small minded friends. I don't want uneducated friends. I don't want unkind friends. So um, if you share a post that's promoting this negativity, then I'm not really interested in being friends with you. Um, But the old me, the, the Katie if you just spoke to me six months ago, would be fighting them, shouting, calling them names too. But I feel like I've, even over this, these few months, I've evolved and I'm learning to respond in an educated way. Nice. To which that I want my son to do the same. Yeah. Okay, question. You fall in love with a black man. You bring him home to dad and mum. Mm-hmm. What do they say? Nothing. Nothing. What do their friends say? Oh well, yeah, of course. Um, my dad, my dad's told me before that, like the amount of people that have said, "How, how did you feel when your daughter brought a black man home?" And he's like, the same way I felt when she brought a white man home. Still wanted to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, you know, um, I'm very blessed that I have a beautiful family that. Um, we have different race I've got different race nieces nephews um it's never been an issue in my family and I'm, and I'm very blessed for that um but it was only highlighted even to my own family like how how people do have a problem now that obviously now that they have a mix a mixed race child um but yeah my I know in particular a lot of men came to my dad saying oh how did you feel Oh, wow, crazy. So in the past few weeks, recent weeks, we've all seen the whole world come together by marching, protesting, you know, the whole world. And in my eyes, I see many white people and different race people coming together, you know, and standing in unification against racism, against the injustice system, against you know the wrongs that are happening which i think is absolutely a beautiful thing and i feel like it's showing that there's so much power with the people you know the power is with us honest people so in terms of now in the uk one of the posts i put was no race war no race war mm-hmm. so in the uk do you feel that n- you know, the solidarity of us all being together now being fragmented into, as you said, these posts that are going around, it's becoming a racial thing, issue thing. You know, is that a, a result of it? Do you think? Can sorry, you hear me? Just froze a little bit then, right at the end, sorry. <laughs> Do you think, is that a result of fear? I think it's a result of fear, ignorance, um, trying to think you're funny with your mates. Trying, I, I just, I don't know. I, I think they're ill. I'm sorry. I, I have no excuse for these people because I just don't. I'm sorry. Um, I just, I would feel, you know, even myself, I shared a post once um, and it was, you know, with, with the government and this Dominic Cummings who um, did what he shouldn't during lockdown. And I posted it. I just found it funny because it was the JK Rowling did a post and she called him a funny name. And I just felt like it was very Harry Potter-esque. And I thought mm-hmm. it was really funny. So I shared it and someone challenged me on it saying, what happened to be kind? He's still a human. And I thought, do you know what? You're right. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know this man. I don't know his circumstances. I shared a post that I thought was quite funny. I didn't think about it. So I just think we need to keep challenging these people because even me, I didn't think nothing of it because, you know, you think because you don't know someone and because they're in the government, you think, oh, he deserves it. And I do think he was wrong, but the post was just funny. Mm -hmm. But for someone who advocates constantly, be kind, don't don't hate people for colour or choice of sexuality you know I'm, I'm a big believer in that for me to share a post like that it was very ignorant of me um mm. so like I said we all make mistakes but there's people that I can understand they might make one mistake yeah. but when you when it's eight nine ten posts of a similar 
negativity that's not a mistake yeah. that's passion. that's yeah. a, a real passion yeah. into wanting to to throw out anything ne- negative with the black lives matter protest wow. and it's not stopped yes. the amount of other mixed race girls um, or parents of mixed race children black friends that have contacted me since saying oh are you are you you know how are you feeling it's so stressful it's so hard so everyone's feeling it yeah it's crazy so in 10 years time everything's kind of i was going to say the protest everything's kind of calmed down or what you know not calm down make it happen make the change always <laughs> but what do you see of this issue in 10 years time uh, I hope, I think with generation and generation, I hope it's getting better. I hope education gets better. I know through personal experience over these last few weeks, I have tackled a few people kindly on mm. the posts that they've they've posted and I've, I've given the history of why something's been taken off the TV or why this is seen to be offensive. Um, and I do think it's easier as a white woman to take people on because I do think it would be harder if I was a black woman taking them on. You'd get the old, oh, she, you know, she's she's being this, she's being that. But people who I personally know that I've taken on, nobody's come back at me negatively. They've all come back and said, I'm sorry, I didn't realise. So, you, you have pointed out the biggest amazing thing ever because you said, you know, for a black woman to kind of um to kind of you know um to tell someone or to say that's not right they'll actually see it you know in a conflict way yeah you know what i mean and you yourself are going there to make that change and then the actually you know understand it i always say we can't clean other people's houses i can't go to your house bang down your door and then go and clean your house. You won't let me in, you know? And in the sense of society, things that are happening around, I really do think that, you know, the English, the white race, you know, the wonderful people that see that things are wrong within their communities have to make that change. They have to, just like yourself, what you just said that you you know they was able to actually identify if they can identify with you they're able to hear you mm-hmm. and so they can hear you then they're able to process what you're saying and then change comes i couldn't do that i could do that in my own environment in my own community and that's what we all need to do across the globe we have to change our own communities and you know, and make that difference within our own spaces. I find that with the, you know, the protests, what's happening around the world, um, you know, it, you, I just feel like, you know, as, as black people, we can make that stance, we can shout loud, we can try and, you know, bring the picture so you can see, you know, what's happening but we can't change we can't make the change in that industry or in that community or in that culture the culture has to change from inside out so thank you and excellent for for saying you know to highlight in the biggest point you know of this whole interview is that you know you have to the culture has to change from inside out and people you have to educate your culture, your environment, your community. So any of the good souls that are out there that understand what's happening, that is your mission that you need to do that. Definitely. So, definitely. so in terms of, you said, in tools going forward that you would love to see is more um, black history, pre-slavery, yes. and, you know, especially pre-slavery, definitely, because we definitely. That's see the king and the queens of the UK who were black and the Scottish, the royal family, everything. And um, even Queen Victoria, yeah, she was biracial. Yeah, 
Queen yeah. Victoria's baby. Oh, so that was good, <laughs> good, good, good. So definitely, Katie, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your wisdom. And um, this is a topic as well that not a lot of people would be brave enough to kind of come and speak about. And, you know, so I'm really, really grateful for you to share your experiences and your wisdom. And also as well, what's beautiful that you, you said as well is that you identify that, you know, you can never you you can't understand the experience because no. it, it, it's it would it's never happened but you know but you're still there to you know help make change help you know help your son grow and you understand that culture is a massive thing that he needs to know he, all sides of his culture to be able to stand strong you are a blessing to the world Thank you so much. So are you. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on the Mama Knows Best Show, Stories of the Soul. And definitely um, we'll get a link if you want to talk about this topic even more to Katie. I'm sure you can as, um, you know, uh, and listen to anyone who oh, has similar yeah. experiences or wants to share with you or even help and give you the tools as well. So that would be really Always. Definitely. Thank you so much, Katie. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Oh, how wonderful. OMG, how wonderful. I loved speaking to Kate and it was beautiful, so beautiful that, you know, um, she highlighted many things. And one of the things that I think was absolutely amazing, like enlightening, that she understood that, you know, in order to make change, you know, especially, you know, within, you know, this you know, the racist society, let's say, you know, change has to come from inside out. And any of the good doers, you know, the ones that understand um, what's happening, um, you know, she's seen it as her responsibility to actually make change within her culture, her community. And one beautiful thing is, you know, she understood and she said, I I don't I don't understand because I've, that's not my experience but I'm here to support my son my child I understand as well that you know he has to understand his cultural background he has to know who he is and knowing who he is he has to get the information you know about his African heritage and if, if no one's there to teach it guess what I'm going to go out and I'm going to find that information myself and equip my son so he can stand anywhere in life and actually be strong and know who he is and be able to eloquently speak and inform and make change. I'm absolutely, lutely, lutely, ooh, I'm really happy that I've had this interview and anyone who, um, you know, wants to hear anything else, understand the tool, get that book as well, the Google, Google that book, um, you know, The Forgotten History of British White Slavery, absolutely informative. And from my point of view, it breaks that myth about slavery happening only from, you know, Africa. No, it's that it's here first. Hello. <laughs> so definitely get informed, know about your history and just going on my journey of honoring great black men and women of UK history. I understand how much Queen Charlotte, who brought the first Christmas tree, um, I, I read and the pine cones, um, you know, symbolizing the pineal gland and, um, you know, um, being Queen Victoria's um, you know, grandmother, which makes Queen Victoria biracial, you know, the Scots, King, King Kenneth, Kenneth the Third, you know, and that whole lineage of black kings and queens in Scotland and in Europe. Oh, the history is so beautiful, so beautiful. And we definitely have to get back to understanding that. Then, you know, it kind of brings about an, you know, information that actually gives understanding to kind of go forward informally is that a word informally go forward definitely but def definitely love and unity to everyone across the world no matter your race definitely and I think Casey said it best about it's important to know yourself from all angles your cultural self you know know your history your lineage and definitely 
and definitely from there you can stand strong and just know what you need to do now i need to one of you know one of our mom and those best episodes maker and we're going to find out my history uh, and especially you know um you know the the story that i just discussed to you about being freeborn and then understanding what's my response uh, my responsibility and what i have to do to make that change and make right so definitely join me for stories of the soul next week every single week and definitely bringing you some great interviews and wisdom katie thank you so much i'm giving you a hook through the um tv what airwaves um yeah waves <laughs> well done keep going and it was lovely speaking to you definitely make sure you join me on the mama knows best.com sign up to our newsletter there i've shared my world and you know my story as well that's led me on to do stories of the soul so make sure you definitely check that out and subscribe guys this is so definitely see you soon and if you've been affected by any of this information you know please definitely um put you know put your comments get in contact you know um we're all learning we're all seeking and and definitely what we know today might change tomorrow. So all of this was done from a loving space. So thank you so much for joining me on the Mama, Mama, Mama Knows Best show. Definitely, let's change the world from inside out, all communities.